People who have been in prison, what's the most disturbing thing you've seen or heard? Brazil. Once the lights went out you'd start hearing scraping noises on the concrete. It was gang members sharpening their homemade knives on the concrete floor. Somebody was about to get sorted out when you heard that noise. Stuff straight out of hell. I was in county jail, but in a rough part of Southern California, we had triple stack bunk beds and general population in just a large, open room. I had a middle bunk and oftentimes at night guys would try to stealthily jerk off. The bed shaking is a dead giveaway, and usually you just try to ignore it. Well, one night I'm reading, and the bed started shaking vigorously, which is not how you do it, as I was putting my book down to tell this dude knock it off. He fell off his bunk and cracked his skull open on the concrete floor. He had a seizure on the top bunk and fell down about 7 feet straight to the concrete head first. That was an ugly sight to see. Not me, but I know from friends in Africa that in their country, people caught poaching are often locked in a prison cell with a lion. Separated by metal bars of course, the lion is usually one being rehabbed and has plenty of room. To move around it's a huge cell and 95% of it belongs to the lion. The inmate is put in a narrow strip against the wall. I thought that sounded like not much worse than regular prison. Because the lion can't reach you. But they said, until you've been in there, you can't imagine how terrifying it is. When you're close enough to a lion to smell its breath. And see its glowing eyes at night. And can't get away. The lion's food and water is put right against the separation bars. So it spends a good chunk of its time voluntarily near the criminal. When it's there, the inmate can't get more than 3 to 4 feet away from the lion. Probably seeing the lengths people will go to in order to get opiate replacement therapy like bup or suboxone. In order to either sell to someone else, or because they're being intimidated to give their dosage to someone. Inmates have to swallow the liquid in front of a garden nurse obviously, but they have figured out ways around this. Creating little paper catchments and sticking them in their throat or just being empty stomached and vomiting it up when they get back to their cells. Legit crazy people who not faking but schizophrenic or something else wrong feel sorry for them cause other inmates will mess them up. Dude sitting there rambling to himself every waking moment and guards just let the nutcase and gen pop to irritate everyone until someone shuts him up. Lots of crazy people need to be somewhere else but gen pop. Oh and I was in group therapy and this dude had a ball in his hand when talking, and I figured it was like something he got from commissary, don't think much of it then someone comes up to him holding a trash can, it was a ball of his own fesses. I turned 21 in solitary confinement, was only put in for 2 weeks for passing contraband, soups, the guy next to me had been in for months, the windows are frosted, so you can't see outside into the world. The guards come by twice a day and point a taser at you, while they tear your cell up, while you're naked. The screams at night from the guy in the cell next to me were so heartbroken, it didn't sound human at all. Just helplessness and sorrow. Sorry, I know you were looking for stories of fights and shankings, but the thing that disturbed me the most was listening to that man every night for those two weeks. I had a cellie who had been in for 30 years. He was institutionalized. He had been in since he was 18, and he was almost 50. He was serving a life sentence for murder. Just knowing him was disturbing enough to give the soul chills. I can't describe the feeling. I walked on eggshells around him. He never did anything to me, but I knew one false move, and he could have easily beat me up. He put me in fear. I know he knew it too. Not me but my aunt who was convicted of a pretty serious white collar crime did time in a federal prison known for holding the worst of the worst violent female prisoners which the popular TV series Orange is the New Black is based on. When she got out all my cousins had to get together at her place where she told us all her prison stories. And by far the craziest one was about a woman who was in there for killing and cooking her infant child then feeding it to her husband for having an affair. Not prison but did a month in jail. My cellmate would steal the candy I bought from the commissary that I had hidden under my pillow when I was sleeping. I caught him once and we got into an argument. He threatened to rip off my head and poop in my mouth. This same guy was also making pruno in our cell. When I found out about it, I told him to dump it out. He said he would slash it, but he just packed soap around it and hid it to hide the smell. I dumped it out on him when he was in the shower. During this same stint a guy from solitary was brought into our block. 
he got in an argument with his cellmate about who has top or bottom bunk. Solitary confinement guy was about 6 feet 3 inches, other guy was about 5 feet 6 inches, other guy had just come from the shower so only had a towel on with wet feet. Solitary guy threw one punch and absolutely laid him out. There was also a guy that came into our block that smuggled in suboxone in his prison wallet. He shit out in the shower which pissed a bunch of us off. When the guards found out they started to take him out and he tried to make a run for it. I had a friend. He developed schizophrenia and murdered his 8 year old sister and his mom when he was in college because he couldn't afford the medicine and unfortunately thought he could get by for a couple week without it. I was in a jail cell when they brought him in. My friend had blood on him and kept screaming about how their period blood sustained him and after a few minutes was rubbing his fesses on himself and the walls. He was given medication, stood for trial and plead insanity found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, he said he didn't remember doing any of it, and medical professionals backed him up on that account, I don't know, seems like he needs help and not prison, but that's America I guess. Second night I was in I heard officers screaming, disengage over and over, and I looked at my cellie who had been down for 20 years for murder what was going on, he told me, that when they catch a couple of guys doing the deed they scream that to get them to stop. This same Sally started to growl like a dog at my foot, while I was laying on the top bunk, and then pretended to bite at my foot. When he did this my toe went into his mouth which caused him to gag. One time during count these two guys started to make tattoo ink by burning baby oil, but they threw water onto it, when it got too big and it spread all over their cell. So they were locked in the cell with flames covering the walls with them locked in it. They were about to get out in a couple of months but ended up getting a 10 year sentence for arson after the incident. I've been to jail, juvie and a JDOC, kitty prison. My crazier stories are from juvie and JDOC surprisingly, we had a kid in juvie who was given a 23 month sentence for stealing a car. He tried to kill himself by falling off the bunk, which is only like a foot and a half high, and onto the toilet. I'm guessing he thought it would break his neck all over 23 months. He ended up on suicide watch, where they put you in a single cell outside the guard room and they have a camera on you 24 over 7. I dk how other juvies work, but in that cell is a button you have to press to request a move from the bed, use the toilet etc. He ended up with a massive bump on his head the size of a cantaloupe. I've seen a kid who was 15 go into juvie on his court date he was given 6 years for committing armed robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. I've never seen somebody give up on everything in one moment, but that kid's teen years were done for. In JDOC we had this kid named Junior who showed up and thought we were in a movie or something. First thing he did was try and fight one of the leaders of a gang and he came to regret it quick. They all jumped on him and beat him. For his entire sentence not a day went by where he wasn't a punching bag for that gang. Any chance they got they were messing him up. It got so bad that EOS ended up putting him in isopod for his own safety. I was never put in prison. But I was in jail a couple of times. The most messed up thing I saw was when I was in jail in New Orleans about 20 years ago. I was on the psych floor because of my disabilities. Done up in leather restraints. One of the normal inmates was a trustee and for some reason he was on our floor helping the guards. In the cell next to mine was this one guy really messed up in the head. Wouldn't stop screaming. I'll admit he was pissing me off. The trustee kept telling him to shut up. But the guy wouldn't stop. After a little while, the trusty signaled the guards and they remotely opened the guy's cell door. He went into the cell and proceeded to beat the crap out of the poor guy for about 5 to 10 minutes. Now remember, this was the psych floor. The guy was in leather restraints. Like me, no way to defend himself. When the trusty came back out, he stopped in front of my cell and asked if I had a problem. Now, I may be disabled, but I'm not stupid. I shook my head and put on a look of fear. They released me a couple days later, and after they took my restraints off, I looked right at the trustee and told him to pray that he never sees me outside. I stopped being afraid of bullets a long time ago, and for just a moment, I got to see his fear. It was very satisfying. Kitchen staff that would pour dish soap on the extra food after meals, you know. That way people couldn't eat it out of the trash in the back. Other thing is the amount of people who abused psychiatric medications for recreation. Zoloft, Ifexa, Lamictal, Cogentin was the worst. P 
people would eat 20 of them and come out to the day room tripping so hard they couldn't remember the last thing they said every time they said anything. Talking about going to their boat and having a conversation with some girl in the chow hall, getting up and walking a lap around the day room like they were about to go somewhere and then try to go into other people's cells, completely forgetting where they are. And, of course, stabbings. Sometimes in the chow hall and you wouldn't even know what happened it was so fast and it just became something everyone talked about for days, like it was something to be hungry about. One kid who just arrived a week prior stabbed in the face 13 times in the middle of the night, a few cells down from mine. His celly thought the FBI put him there for monitoring. The look on his face when they pulled him out was haunting. I bumped into him years later, and he said he didn't like talking about it. Wasn't in prison, but my last job involved representing employees of the prisons, correction officers, admin staff, doctors, nurses, etc. when they were sued by inmates. One day I was talking to a co-making small talk while on a visit to jail to investigate my case and asked him a similar question you asked what's the most crazy thing you saw bc i was interested guy says he had a job once as a suicide cell watcher basically when an inmate threatened suicide in that particular prison he would go on suicide watch softer walls paper clothes no drawstrings so can't be made onto ligature no shoes nothing sharp glass cell door so an officer could watch him etc this officer says he was assigned to watch the glass doors of two cells for his 8 hour shift. So he's sitting there doing his job both inmates were in their bunks. When all of a sudden he sees what he described as an ungodly amount of blood soaking the bed of one of the cells. Dripping on the floor. He said he saw it just spreading over the guy's sheets like a spill cleaned up W paper towels. He does what he is supposed to. Calls backup. Medical etc. They go into the cell to try to save the inmate slash CPR slash etc. Where they found the inmate with both wrists slash deep. He's looking in the cell for a weapon or piece of metal. Figuring the poor guy smuggled something into suicide watch. Nope. For faint of heart you may want to stop reading here. Turns out the inmate had worked his big toenail back and forth back and forth until it loosened. And he was able to rip it off his foot completely. He then took the toenail and sharpened it on a small piece of exposed concrete on a wall behind the padding, until it was sharp enough to cut. Then the inmate used it to open up his wrists in a suicide attempt. He had other crazy stories, and I heard plenty of others from guys over the years. I left that job for greener pastures after 10 plus years, but left with two primary realizations. Working in prisons is very hard and dangerous. The vast majority of co's are just normal people hoping to punch in and punch out without trouble or danger. Like any business there are bad apples, but for the most part these guys are not picking fights or beating up inmates for sport. And two, what our penal system needs more than anything is more mental health resources. The co's would be the first to admit that they aren't equipped to deal w the considerable mental health issues that the incarcerated individuals are dealing with. The security staff and inmates are out in bad spots bc the mental health resources just are not there.